Hi, my name is Pimon Rat Tian Sawat, and now you are with me for the last topic of today. The last topics of today are the S number, voucher specimen, the importance of herbarium, and seed banking. At the beginning of restoration projects, it is common that we do not know all of the tree species name that you will work with. So sometimes local names are known, but not the species name. So it is to come up with the system that you can index the species that you work with. And for FORU, we use the system that call S number. So we assign the S number for each of the tree species we work with. And for example, the first tree species that you work with, you say S001 or S1. And um, the index, the number of the digits, it depends on how big of the trees, the number of the tree species that you work with. Not only the S species, we can also um, assign the batch number for each of the seed collection with, with that we do for that same tree species. For example, for Foro, we use B to represent batch number. So if you collect the seed from the first species and you have several batch, you can go from S001, B1, B2, B3, and so on and so forth. So those S number that we assign to the species will match the tree species, the local name, and also the species name. For example, here in the picture, you see that this is S12. B1, so it's a 12 species that we work with, and is the batch number one. And it's also very good practice to display the S number in the working area of the tree nursery. Here is an example. On the left hand side here, you see the whiteboard, the board with the species names and the S number written on it. So then if people do not familiar with those species, would you uh, write the species name and the S number if you know the species name already. And then every time that you have seed coming in, don't forget to label those batch each time that you collect it. And on the right hand side here also an example of the board that established you hear S number, right? And then the middle column here is the local name written in Thai, and the right hand side is the species name. Using number is more easily remembered in comparison to long scientific species name. And if you use this for the S number system, even the name, the scientific name uh, changed, you can refer back to what is the ID number of those three species. And also when we do germination tests, it's really, really good practice to write down the number, the species number, the S number, and also batch number. As you can see in the picture here, in the germination, on the germination tray, we put the label of the S number and batch number. I would like to emphasize that, make sure that you always match the species numbers with scientific names because local names are unreliable. And if we do not know the species scientific name of the species at the beginning, we can have someone else helping us. However, we need voucher specimen for species identification. And for the trees that we work with, we can collect leaves, fruit, and flowers if possible, and then we make it into a voucher specimen. In this picture, we use the cutting pole, long cutting pole, to get the leaves and the fruit specimen. And remember that if we cannot verify the species, 
all uh, the material that we have will not be useful. Uh, we have to make sure that we work with the right species. So here is an example of uh, making voucher specimen in the field. The picture on top here, on the top right here, um, show you the material that we need for voucher specimen. So we can have a paper, like a newspaper paper. And also we have the uh, wooden board that we use to press and stack the sample together. And here we have a small scissor for cutting and trimming the, seed, uh, the leaves that we collected. So we get the big branch and then we trim them and make sure to keep the essential features. The essential features here is being that um, how the leaf arrange on the branch or some other like stipules that you see from the, um, from the leaves from the plant specimen. And also in the picture on the right, right hand side, bottom right here, you see that when we press, when we press the leaf specimen on um, the board, we should also have the leaf facing up and facing down as well. Uh, and we also, if you get fruit and flower, that will be really helpful in species identification. After you collect the plant materials for voucher specimen in the field, you will stack them up and then tie it with the rope. And then after you come back to the tree nursery or to your lab, make sure to dry them, make sure to dry them. And here is an example of a very simple, very simple um, drying box that we can use. So we need a heat source and here heat source is on the bottom. We use the light bulb as the heat source. And then we make a shelf in this drying box to be able to put the stack of the plant specimen on. And then has the lid on top. And the lid on top should have the ventilation, should have the hole for ventilation. So the moisture from the plant specimen can um, get out from this drying box. And when you collect the plant specimen in the field, record the um, or describe the species that you work with. Write down the species number, write down the color of the uh, leaves, color of the fruit and seeds um, and flowers. Because once the specimens are dry, those color, those feature can change. But when it's flesh, when it's fresh, you can write it down how it's look like. And also describe the habitat where you collect the species as well. And here is the example of the label of the specimen. We include the family name, botanical name, or scientific name, where the location of um, plant collection when you collect it. Also here, we note all the, if we see um, some feature that you suspect that it will change once it's dry, like color, make sure to put it down in the label, on the label. And make sure that here, put the S number and batch number on the label too. After the plant specimens are dry, the next step is to mount them on robust paper and put them in the storage in the herbarium. If possible, if you have space and enough staff to work in the facility, start your own herbarium and store those um, plant specimens, voucher specimens in your own herbarium. But not only that, uh, when you collect the plant specimen, we usually collect several of them. So after you have them, send the duplicate to a different herbaria in your country. And that way, um, we can have professional taxonomists working on species identification. Here is an example of the voucher specimen. Here you see that we have the plant specimen that is mounted on a piece of paper and the label. Label is still important. It should go with the specimen. 
and if possible, start the database that you can enter all the um, species, the fish uh, the description, the S number, and um, the specimen number in the system in the digital form because you it will be easy for you to come back and access it. One problem that can happen with dry leaves on piece of paper is fungal infection and getting attacked by insects. So make sure that it's properly put in the storage cabinets in a dry condition. And it's important to have expert identify the species of your plants, of your tree species that you work with. Here is the example. Uh, this picture is taken in the herbarium, in CMU herbarium, Chiang Mai University herbarium. And here is our um, taxonomist, Mr. Maxwell. He passed away already, but he has uh, worked with the uh, plant specimen and identify the specimen for us. And when we use the scientific name of the species, make sure that you use accepted name. So to verify the accepted name, we use the database of Plants of the World Online that published by Q. So um, here you can search, this is an example of the page of um, the species Hovenia dulcis and make sure that that Slovenia Lucy's name is the accepted name. In the Plan of the World online, it will show you if the names are synonyms or is the accepted name, and make sure you use the accepted name of the species. Foro have worked with a lot of seedlings. So one good thing that we also keep is to keep the seedlings specimen. In these pictures, in these two pictures, you see that on the left hand side is the picture of the seedling, the picture of the voucher specimen of the seedling from the germination to a small true seedling. And we know the age of each of these seedlings. So you can write that you can make label and known age of known age of the seedling. On the right hand side um, is the scientific drawing. A scientific drawing of the seedling at different ages as well. If you can keep the seedlings um, specimen like this, it will be very helpful for people later on when uh, they have to work with the seedlings. So they can study and know how the seedlings of each different species looks like. And if possible, write your own seedling books. Here is the example of um, Foru tree seeds and seedlings book. And inside there for each of the species, we have picture scientific drawing of each, of each species and the seedlings as well. And also the description of how barks look like, um, the leaves look like, the fruit and seeds. And these will be very, very helpful for uh, future staff that can study and to know more about the species. Foro makes uh, the books of seeds and seedlings available online for free. So if you go into our website, foro.org, go to the library and then search for the seed and seedlings books, you will be able to download. Right now we have Thai and English version. And uh, I think we are also due to update this book and we will do it in the future. In addition to books, keeping online database is very useful. Here is the example of uh, Foru Seedling database. On the right hand side is the landing page of the database. You can search the species and then the database will give you the picture of the seedlings at different ages. The ability to recognize tree seedlings is helpful. 
first, it's helpful before restoration because before we plan to restore any site, we should go and take a look what they are already in the area, what are the regenerants or the seedlings that are available in the area already, so we can identify the species. And also it's helped us in planning, so what species we're gonna put in, and then after restoration, we will monitor the regeneration of different species in the area. So sometimes, not only the species that you plant, you expect to find more seedlings of other species that you do not plant as well. So remember and recognize the seedlings are helpful. I would like to summarize the first part of this lecture. Number one, come up with the species numbering system and then match that with the scientific names of the species and keep the voucher specimen for all of the species that you work with. So now let's move on to part two.